welcome to Midlife Good Life. I'm Tim and this is Susan. And we are off on a Saturday adventure today. We'll talk about that in a few minutes, but before we do, uh, how was your week, babe? Um, my week was good. How was your week? My week was okay, getting back in the groove of being at work after uh, being out of town last week. So uh, I think it was all right. Very productive in places. Good. I, oh, I had a really strange, bizarro thing happen to me yesterday. Um, I was at the house, and I keep a little girl um, at the house a few days a week, and she was playing in her playpen, and the day was beautiful, so I propped open the back door, and I stuck the playpen, like, right by, right kind of in and out of the back door so she could enjoy the outside and be inside, too, where I could still see her while I was in the kitchen and everything, and all of a sudden, I looked up, and this giant black bird came flying into our house like in the house I don't mean like a little bit in the house I mean like we have a back porch and it went under the back porch awning and like on the porch into the house into the kitchen circled around the dining room table I screamed ah, Ashley and Ashley started coming out of her room and the bird circled around towards the hallway where I couldn't see the bird anymore that far into the house and all the while I think I had like three split seconds to think how am I going to get this bird out of the house and how is it not going to poop on this child or on my floor and or my kitchen table or whatever in the sink or I don't know wherever it was going to poop and then it flew around in the circle and then as quickly as that happened it went whew, right back out the door. Now, when she described the story to me, she described yeah. about this huge black bird it was like this big. flying into the house. Now, we were out and about yesterday, and she points to this bird and says, Oh, that's the bird that was in our house. Now, the bird was a glorified mosquito. It was about no, this, it was big. Like this big. It was okay. like a sparrow-sized crow bird. I don't know. It was a <laughs> sparrow-sized <laughs> crow bird. And yeah. she covers. It was like a parakeet. It was smaller than a giant. Vulture. Blue Jay. It was larger than a little finch sparrow. That's it. It was it was big enough that those birds should not be in your house. That's what they should not be. You also asked me, well, you sent me a text, well, is the door still open? But it was such a beautiful day that I was willing to take the sacrifice. If a bird flew in again, I would figure out a way. At least I could think about it and have a plan of how to get the bird back out of the house. And I think I knew, well, if the bird comes in, the bird will go out. Obviously, it did first time, so... This is not the first time we've had a bird in the house. Do you remember? No. In Panama City, we got one stuck in the, in the flu. Yeah, twice. twice. In the flu or the, the, the gas, like the heat, the gas yeah. thing, like it would came, come down in the pipe. With Couldn't the gas. fly its way out, so we had to chase that bird around the house. It was well. always on a Sunday. I think it was two Sunday mornings, yeah. like separate, like a month apart, six weeks apart. I don't know, but it was stuck down in the pipe. So you had to undo the pipe, and we and I held a garbage bag, <laughs> and we held the pipe. And as soon as we got it undone, like stuck the garbage bag over the end of the pipe, and the bird went in the garbage bag, and we took it outside. But so, that was like way back in the house. It wasn't even like the kitchen by a back door. That was like in the middle hallway, way back by the bedrooms. And I don't know how we would have gotten that bird, both of those birds out. So we are thinking about starting a bird removal service. Yes. A house bird removal service. Yeah. yeah. Three times. That makes us professionals. That's true. It involves a lot of screaming and a lot of saying, we don't want to do it. We don't want to. My giant fear was that the bird was going to poop in the house. Well, I mean, and be stuck or harm the child, of course. I was thinking, how do I get the bird back out past the baby, you know? Um, but more, I was thinking, like, that bird is going to poop everywhere. But actually, in all three times we ever had bird in our house, I don't think it ever pooped in the house. Not that we know of. So, baby, baby's thoughts to this adventure? I don't I mean, even I know think you didn't she ask knew. Her, I don't but... even think she realized it happened. Because she was like looking down playing in her playpen and the bird went over her head and then it went back out. She noticed, oh, and then by the time I screamed, like literally like, ah, there's a bird in the house, Ashley. And then I think then the baby was more looking at me than about the bird. I don't think she realized that it even happened. So. All right. So that's uh, an overview of our week. Uh, or like one moment of our week. Okay, a snapshot but, yeah. of... Moffat Adventures. Yeah. All right, we'll talk to you some more as the day unfolds. All right, here we are, just having gone through the tour of the shadows on the Tesh. Your observations? Um, 
it was nice. It was very interesting. Yeah. We had a little 13 minute video to watch beforehand of the history of it. And then we did a little 30 minute tour with a lady. Um, it and was I, very interesting. And I got in trouble because I lingered in rooms too long and I touched the curtains. Three times. I think you lingered in one so she began to be suspicious of you yes. and then you touched the curtains and in the middle of her and back in 1864 this is what happened and this is what happened sir don't touch the window la 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 and then she just kept talking it was like she was planned for you and then and then um I think in the last room after the touching she was like sir we'll go in that room next because you were like yeah. halfway walking into the other uh, but you gotta know that's your job you gotta follow the guide and I came so, to take a tour of the, the house. Yeah, but take a tour with the tour guide, not oh. Tim's tour. Tim is not a tourist guide here at this house. Maybe we'll go around and take pictures of the front of it too. This is the back. Yeah. This is like Faces the bayou. Extra bedroom. I don't remember what was in the middle. Middle was the uh, parlor. Parlor. Kitchen. Kids rooms. Kitchen. Kitchen. Kids rooms. Living room for the family. Master bedroom. Something on the third floor, but we were not allowed into the it. The attic and things like that, yeah. storage, yeah. So, we'll see. All right, we'll take some pictures. All right, here we are in the front of the Shadows of the Tesh, located here in New Iberia. Not sure if we mentioned that earlier or not, but there you can see the front there. Hey, we're on our way back home right now and just finishing up the day, but I know that lots of you uh, have subscribed down below for lots of different reasons, but mostly for snack reviews. So, yeah. uh, on the way home today, uh, we have snacked on York Peppermint Patty Bites. Bites, that's important. Me, little bite. And Junior Mints. All right, what's yeah. the difference between a York Peppermint Patty and a Junior Mint? Well, first of all, I love them both, but I am a chocolate mint fan because my favorite ice cream way back from episode like four is mint chocolate chip ice cream. So I'm a big chocolate mint fan. And um, ironically, I like these snacks far more than I like mint chocolate true. chip ice cream. Um, but I think if I was given a choice at the store and all things were equal in sizing, cost, and packaging, and presentation, and everything, I would definitely choose the Pe New York Peppermint Patty Bites. I think they have a little bit darker chocolate and they come out kind of smooth and creamy as they melt in your mouth a little bit. And the Junior Mints are really still good, but not as strong mint and they don't have that dark chocolate. They just kind of mush in your mouth. Yeah, I like the the little more hard chocolate shell on the outside like of the York. Yeah. Okay, here's the thing though. Do you let them melt in your mouth and then if, enjoy them and savor it? Or are you just like chomp, <laughs> chew, swallow? Are you talking to them or to me? No, I'm talking to you. I know the answer, but I'm asking you because our audience might be curious. Well, you say it like it's either or. Do I let them melt in my mouth and enjoy them, or do I eat them? Well, no, I eat them and enjoy them. I don't get that. I don't know. Like when I eat a chocolate bar, I have to like bite the chocolate bar, let the chocolate melt in your mouth just a little bit to like kind of have that chocolate all over and then really melt it and eat it. Like. I still chew it and eat it, but I, I don't know. I don't want to die of old age before I finish eating my candy. <laughs> That's it. Yes. All right. So we are almost home. We did have a really good time. We did. At Beautiful the, day to be outside. The shadows on the Tesh um, antebellum home. It was very good. If you're in the area and you got some free time, go check it out. I like the fact that it wasn't... Um, I told Tim, it wasn't like a three hour tour. It was like a 35, 30 minute. 40 minute tour. And then look around at the um, the garden, which I didn't really think was that great. No, more, it was yeah. more just greenery and grass, which was beautiful. Yeah. But, um, and, and, the, and the Bayou Tesh, which was yeah. nice. Um, it was worth the drive. I mean, just for, you know, if you have a free Saturday, check it out. And, and if you live nearby, but if you live like in Michigan or North Carolina or Texas or many of our other followers, um, you know, it's not worth that drive. It's not. I mean, we might be, but not to go there. Yeah. So, Shadows on the Tesh also going to be my band name. <laughs> nice. Are you going to be a chocolate eating band? Yeah. Okay. All right. We just turned into the neighborhood. So, we're off. You never know what might happen next time, what our adventure may be, what our words of Moffat wisdom may be, or what um, great, hilarious story we may tell about birds flying in the house. Stay tuned. Subscribe below. That way you get to find out.
low. Yep. Almost missed our turn. Sorry. <laughs>